Now, within our American version of federalism, we have seen a number of different types of federalism, attitudes towards federalism that have arisen over the last hundred years or so. And to this day, there's still a debate over what kind of federalism we want to have. So one of the most controversial types of federalism is cooperative federalism, the kind of federalism that came out of the Great Depression, in which our country was going through the worst time period of its history, except for maybe the Civil War. We had an unemployment rate of 25%. We had people starving. We had people committing suicide because life was just so horrible in America. And there really wasn't any way for the government to help people out. So cooperative federalism, which is where states and federal governments work together as one government, as one body, um, came together to create what's known as the New Deal, which was a system of uh, safety nets and protections for people so that when they fall on hard times, they have a reasonable chance to recover. Things like Social Security came out of this idea of cooperative federalism, where the state and the federal work together to address different goals of the country. Then in the 1960s, there was another kind of federalism that was developed called creative federalism. In the 1960s, the president had an idea of trying to solve poverty, trying to eliminate or reduce poverty. And one of the ways he wanted to do it was to offer free health care for all people. But the Constitution didn't say he had the right to do that. He can't force that onto the states. So here's how he got creative with it, to get his idea of giving health care to people forced onto the states, whether they liked it or not, without violating the Constitution. He did it by A, saying, if you give health care to poor people under what's known as Medicaid, I will help you pay for it. I will give you money for this Medicaid. If you refuse, not only will I not help you pay for Medicaid, I will also remove other monies that I've been giving to you the whole time. Now, the state still had the freedom to decide, do they want Medicaid or do they not? But because no state wanted to lose money that they were getting from the federal government, they all said yes. So that's a form of creative federalism of forcing federal central government ideas onto the states but in a way that's not actually violating the Constitution because the states can still say no. Then in the 1980s, yet another version of federalism developed called New Federalism, which was people basically getting tired of that creative federalism stuff. Yeah, Medicaid was good, but there's a lot of other things people were saying, you know what, it's too much. So New Federalism is the idea that we still want a federal government, we still want some power there, we still want a kind of a strong Leviathan, but we want to start giving a lot more power back to the states. Let's start letting the states have a lot more freedom to decide what is and is not best for them. Then going into the 21st century, the newest, most popular kind of federalism is fiscal federalism. In fiscal federalism, the national government's main goal is to try to provide aid and other resources for state and local activities. It tries to avoid making brand new programs and just support the programs that are already in existence by taxing, spending, uh, providing help. And there's two major types of ways that the federal government, the national government can help. And that's called grants and aid and mandates. Now, when the federal government does this, it's not free. And there are a number of ways the national government can raise money to pay for things like grants and aid and mandates. But the primary way is through income tax, the taxes that we pay every early spring, every year, and some other taxes all go to the federal government to then be spent on things that benefit us. Grants and aid is by far the most common and generally the most popular way that the government can spend money on the people, on activities, agencies, actions that are already in place. Grants and aid is money and other resources that the national government provides to pay for state and local activities. And there's 
two types of grants. There's categorical grants, which can only be used for a specific purpose, a specific category, such as you can only use the money to build an airport, or you can only use the money to fight crime in a specific area, or you can only use this money we're gonna give you for disaster relief, like when Hurricane Katrina blew over New Orleans. The other kind of grant is the more popular grant because it allows states to decide how they think the money should be spent. There might be a general category, a general uh, area such as public health or education, but then if they get a block grant and say education, as long as the money is spent in education, then it's not breaking the rules of the block grant because the block grant is money that can be spent on anything that's on the topic, whereas a categorical will be on a specific activity or a specific target. The other way that the government can spend money on the people is through a federal mandate. This is something the federal government comes out and says that the states are required to do. Sometimes the federal government will help pay for the requirement. Sometimes the federal government will not help them. It just depends on the situation. Often these are not popular because no one likes to be forced to do things. However, in the past it has been important because it makes people do things they don't want to do that the rest of the country recognizes is important. For example, when the law said you can't discriminate, you can't have a black only school and a white only school, a lot of states said forget it. We're not going to mix. We're not going to mix black and white. We're going to keep it like it is. So there was a mandate. And the federal government said, uh, you start allowing blacks and whites to mix or our soldiers will make you allow blacks and whites to mix. And they did send soldiers to do that because a lot of states were refusing to follow the law at first. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, I, I thought the government can't just force things on people unless the Constitution says they can. Well, according to the Supreme Court, in a court case called McCulloch versus Maryland, the Supreme Court decided that Congress does have the power to take reasonable actions in order to preserve the general welfare. So in this case, while the Constitution didn't specifically say that the federal government, that Congress could send troops down to enforce civil rights and equal treatment, Congress was able to make the argument that this is important for the general welfare. Black citizens are citizens and they deserve the same protections as everyone else. These states are denying it. So we are going to send troops down there to enforce their rights, to protect their rights. And the Supreme Court says that's OK. The federal government can force things like that for those reasons upon the states. And that's all there is to know about federalism for this unit. If you have any questions, please let me know in class. Thank you.